Welcome back, everybody, for another fantastic episode of Battle at the Cinema, powered by Geekery Magazine. Check us out on geekerymagazine.com. I am your host, a random dude, Josh, from the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. And with me on my digital left, well, physical left, actually, is Thaddeus from... Going Nerdy. And so we are here again to talk about movies that are coming out, how the movies did at the cinema. Yeah. Battle at the cinema. And then also our favorite section is sharing movies that you guys either haven't seen in a while or have never seen. Yep. So we're just going to jump right into it with some news. Uh, you know, on the Star Wars front, we did receive some new images yes. uh, from The Last Jedi. I was very excited to see this. I'm excited. I like the new style of Rey as a I, Jedi. I do too. But to be honest, it's not the... St- it's the side characters that get me the most excited. One of the things that I really enjoy about... You like Poe. Well, you know, I like Poe. And I'm not even talking about side main characters. I'm talking about the porkies. Oh, yes, the these little These little cute, force-sensitive animals. Um, I sent a tweet out the other day, and it was like, this is the next evolution of Ewoks. I you can increase see, the power level. I can and, see the, the company that made Furbies making those. Oh, that just put a level of creepiness to those things that... True. However, this may actually be a little more entertaining. Potentially. I, I would have one at my desk. I would. I, I would, too. I Make mean, sure to send all your royalty checks to me and Thaddeus. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> buys me lunch, so... Well, there you go. Um, also on the Disney front, um, Disney has come out and said that they're pulling all their movies uh, from Netflix... And in 2018, we'll be making their own streaming service. Now, a follow-up question. The article I read talked about them pulling the movies, but they hadn't talked about the Star Wars franchise or the uh, Marvel franchise, which are huge yeah. with Netflix right now. And and that may be the case that Star Wars and... Well, Star Wars isn't even on Netflix. I think Rogue One is. Is Rogue One? Oh, and the probably... cartoons have been as well. So the, those will and, stay, but maybe more the Disney brand that they are pulling. Now, the one article that I had read uh, did state that that did not interfere with their Hulu contract. And so mm. a lot of those Disney TV shows will remain on Hulu. Okay. So, so this is going to be more the the classics. Um, I had read like the... The Frozen sequel will, will be released via this, and there was one other one, but I don't oh. remember. So, th- so is the Frozen sequel going to be a straight-to-video type deal? I don't know, but if it is, that really says a lot about the quality of the movie. It does. Ooh. It does, which is slightly disappointing. Because <coughs> um, I, I, you know, I enjoyed Frozen. That's one of those movies that, like, I have daughters. They love, they love uh, the movie, and yeah. it's a it's a fun movie to watch. So, you know, who knows. Um, the last one, um, for those of you who follow up on the DC animated movies, um, D- Warner Brothers had released uh, Batman Return of the Cape Crusader. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is based off of the 60s TV show. They brought back Adam West, Burt Ward, and Julie Newmore to yep. reprise their, their respective roles. Um, and prior to Adam West passing... Uh, he had filmed, or I guess recorded, his parts <coughs> of the sequel to that Batman vs. Oh. Two-Face. And we finally got the release date uh, for that October uh, October 17th. Mm-hmm. Um, and they changed it. It's going to be Batman vs. Two-Face with William Shatner as the voice of Two-Face. Really? The cool thing about this is in the 60s TV show... Two-Face was originally supposed to be in the show yeah. as part of the rogues gallery, but never actually made it. Uh, so this will be the first time that Two-Face has ever been um, brought into that world yeah. of Batman and to have William Shatner's Two-Face. I, I'm excited to see yeah. it. Um, and with this being Adam West's final performance as the Caped Crusader, this will be one that if you're a Batman fan like me, that this is a must-have for your collection. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think just on that alone, but it'll be fun to, to watch it. Yeah. So. 
So, you know, and I watched I watched the original one, or I, the one that came out, mm-hmm. uh, and I struggled with it. The campiness is, is <coughs> it's on par with the original <coughs> show, but it's, it's, because it's not something I'm familiar with yeah. as much anymore, <coughs> it's, it was hard for me to digest. It, it was the same for me. Um, watching it, I I appreciated, I appreciated it for what it was. Yeah, I think the second one is going to be a little different because mm-hmm. the first one you had the Penguin, you had the Joker, you had Riddler, and they had other voice actors imitating Cesar Romero, Burgess Meredith, and Frank Gorshin. Yeah, where this is a whole new character in that they that can... that world. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting. Well, yeah, and and I love William Shatner. <clears throat> On my Hulu playlist, I have uh, like the best of William Shatner's, you know, sings sings yeah. music, and um, I I just love his his voice. I love the way he does stuff. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I, I mean Shatner's. And, and again, Shatner's voice with two faces duality. Yeah. yeah, it'll be good. I think it'll be really awesome. So. Well, cool. But yeah, fun, fun news. It was kind of a slow week for news, it was. actually. Um, but uh, a lot of Star Wars news, which was which was always fun. You can't go yeah. wrong with Star Wars news. No, never. So never. But uh, this last weekend in movies <sighs> was a little disappointing. It was um, coming in at number one was it was the dark tower at yep. 19 million um i thought that would have made more money to I, be honest okay and so i've been thinking about this if you go to to sites like rotten tomatoes it's not doing well if mm-hmm. um but but user reviews you know or or, or or audience reviews have it at a slightly higher clip than than a lot of the critics which isn't wrong yeah you know or it's not uncommon um, but still, it's one of those things that I think is um, disappointing. Now, I didn't get to see it. I was that that was his his notification of how disappointed he was. Yeah, my computer is like, why, why didn't you see it? I'm really surprised you haven't seen it. Um, I've I've made attempts to to put my family to bed and and sneak out. For the I think hour and a half runtime, um, there's a few things that in my mind, without having seen it, um, I'm still going to give it some the benefit of the doubt until I do see it. I'm a huge fan of the book, huge fan of the series, and I look forward to it. Um, but there's a few things. It's PG-13. Interesting. It's a Stephen King movie that's PG-13, and I'm wondering if that made it so. So my sister saw it. Yeah. She said she loved it. In fact, it actually kind of motivated her to go read the book. Okay. So I'm. that kind of sparked some curiosity. Maybe we should just go see it. Yeah. The I Star can... Wives, hey, we're having a dude tonight. Have a good night. Yeah. yeah. I like this plan. I'm, I'm okay with it okay. as well. Um, so, but it's, it's PG-13. Um, the main character is not Roland Duchesne, who is, or the gunslinger, who was the main character in the book. It's actually the kid. And it's told from the yeah. kid's perspective. And so I think potentially that's that's not a bad idea since this is one of those things where it's a, it's a new universe. It's, yeah. you know, um, but but those are my, the two things that I'm thinking might have had uh, a big impact. I don't want to equate it to the movie The Last Action Hero where uh. there's... Where there's a kid lead, and you know you have the last action hero come in, and yeah. you know the villain, but but that kind of setup is is what I kind of feel like happened to it. Yeah. Um, maybe with darker tones, different concepts. Um, Stephen King himself did say that he enjoyed it, mm-hmm. um, but he has said in the past that he loves seeing adaptations of his work so that through different eyes. Yeah. And so I don't know. My my my. Final thought is: I think that people might be might be being overcritical. There may be that. There's probably a couple other factors. Yeah. Um, the fact that we also have, you know, the other movies that are still holding relatively oh, strong. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, for example, 
Number Dunkirk, two. Dunkirk taking Dunkirk. the number two spot did another seventeen million. My, my guess yeah. is that that played a factor, and <coughs> as that movie kind of moves on, mm-hmm. more and more people may go see The Dark Tower. Even looking at the picks of what's coming out this week, yeah. there's a good chance I see The Dark Tower getting a little extra boost. I think so too, and that's that's one of my 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 thoughts about this is is looking at how Dunkirk is held on, um, and then people might have been hesitant because it is a Stephen King movie. Yeah, that they're like, oh, this is going to be scary. This is going to be intense. It's look at the rating. Yeah, it's PG thirteen. I then mean, then again, people said that about Dunkirk and yeah true um in one of his last pg-13 movies 1408 something like that um, yeah that one was kind of a mind screwing one yeah and that was a little trippy and a lot of pg-13 movies nowadays are or a lot of horror movies are pg-13 movies and still bring you to that edge and they're still yeah. pretty terrifying yeah. um but yeah dunkirk came in 17.1 million second yeah. place that's still still holding strong so. yeah so <laughs> if you're if you're betting on movies Dunkirk better be in your top five because yeah, yeah. So and then taking the third spot with uh, twelve million, the Emoji Movie. Yeah, yeah, it's still holding strong. Um, still haven't it's had a, a kids chance movie. To see it. Yeah, and honestly, that's kind of why. Yeah, and I, we can talk about this in a minute when we talk about the new re- the, w- this week's releases. I'm curious to see how it goes up against the next kids movie that launches. Oh, because. Uh, having not seen the Emoji movie, but having seen the prequel to the other one, or the the first mm-hmm. movie, it's, um, and we'll we'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah, the Emoji movie, twelve million. Yeah. So again, negative reviews don't necessarily mean a lot when it comes to um, people just wanting to go see a movie. Yeah. So. Uh, the one that really surprises me, Girls Trip. Man, that is holding strong, eleven point yeah. four million. So, I I'm amazed by this one. Because yeah. I seriously thought it was going to be one of those one and done kind of movies. Not the case. No. Yeah. Not the case. It, definitely. It did better than Kidnap. Okay. So, Kidnap <laughs> comes into our top five. And this was one of those things that is a total shocker. Um, every movie review place that I've seen or mm. every article that I've read about this leading up to it, there was nothing. There was no promotion. There was no... Sometimes those are the best, though. Yeah. Those, those sleeper movies are are the best. And this one definitely um, snuck in. Like It actually topped Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, finally, is... Spider-Man is off the top five. Um, <coughs> it kicked off Detroit and Atomic Blonde, too. Yeah. So, yes, they're still in the top ten. But not one... Maybe we just have a you know ten million dollars worth of Halle Berry fans. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and that's kind of my that's kind of what I'm thinking is that Halle Berry's name recognition brought her into this, yeah, or brought kidnapped into the top five. People are like, oh, it's a Halle Berry movie, yeah, totally. It's not like she was in the '90s though, when like any movie with Halle Berry and it was like, boom, we're gonna go see because it's Halle Berry. Cowboy. Um, but stupid Catwoman. It did ruin everything. Th- that. Uh... That could have killed the Catwoman franchise right then and there. The Catwoman like movie with Halle <laughs> Berry made Catwoman in the Dark Knight Rises bearable. Yeah. Or catable. Uh, no, that was a bad, bad dad joke. Very bad. Damn you, yeah. Barry Allen. Yeah, he's Damn ruined you. everything. Can we can we throw this one on Barry Allen? I just did. Done. All right. Yep, I blame Barry Allen for the Catwoman movie. Now, I will say, slightly moving on to a little bit of next week, I don't think that Kidnapped is going to hold up. Nope. I think Kidnapped is going to drop <laughs> substantially. Um, you know, critic reviews weren't f- super favorable. It actually, critics thought it was better than The yeah. Dark Tower. Um, but fans didn't. Fans haven't really liked this. No. And so it's getting mixed reviews. Um so I think it's going to drop off pretty substantially. Again, you, you look at the other movies, though, that's playing what's coming out. True. So. True. Um, I was surprised that Detroit didn't. Yeah. I'm not really surprised. There wasn't a whole lot of promotion for it. 
So... I think it's going to be better next week. I do. Really? I do. So let's move on to this week's releases. And in number one, and I think this is going to Shake dominate. Up. I think this is going to dominate the, the, the theater scene. And that is Annabelle Creation. I don't think it will. Really? Yes. It, it, it's going to do well, but I don't think it's going to be the top spot. Okay. Um, historically with horror movies, yeah, they, they do well, but it has to really be above and beyond. If we're looking at horror movies, I see it, when that comes out, oh, yeah. doing significantly better than this ever will. So, again, another Stephen King movie, another... Um, this actually has ties to the mm -hmm. Dark Tire, Tower, which is pretty sweet. Um, if you look at the trailer of the Dark Tower, it says yeah. Pennywise. Um, Pennywise is the name of the creature in the movie. It. Here's my thing, though. Annabelle is... If you've seen the trailer... I watched it yesterday. I'm sitting here at work. Probably shouldn't admit to this. I took my 15-minute break. So legitimate. Sitting here at work. Watched the Annab Annabelle like trailer i didn't want to be alone you know you know it's funny there was one piece of news that i had read relating to this movie yeah one of the actors in the movie and i don't i don't remember who um but they said that they felt incredibly uncomfortable around the doll yeah yeah so the story is actually based off of a uh an urban legend so it's it's real um to an extent, yeah. there was a, a doll like this, and it's it's supposedly one of the most haunted objects in America, or something to that extent. Yeah. Um, I've watched a few YouTube videos on it. I have too, and after after watching those like those dolls that seem possessed and things like that, I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I will never have porcelain dolls in my house because they're terrifying. We have some, and part of me wonders if they are possessed. They might be. They might be. I may just um, have to throw them out. So here here's my thing. It's PG thirteen. And so, <laughs> doesn't matter. It, true. Well, no, no, no. But like, it's it's going to reach that that younger audience that allows kids yeah. to go. Um, it's 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 a sequel, and it looks like it's done pretty well. And traditionally, opening weekend for horror movies is the time to go see the movie. True. And so, so while I think it'll do, I don't think it'll break twenty million, but I do think it'll be our top spot. Okay. I do think it's going to be our top spot. May break the amount of Xanax sales going into the weekend. Yeah. So, so. who knows? The second, the second um, movie coming out this week, The Glass Castle. Now, yes. this is one I honestly hadn't heard anything about it. Yeah. The first time I heard about it was watching a video from The Tonight Show with uh, Jimmy Fallon where they did virtual reality Pictionary with... One of the one of the actresses from Glass Castle. Yeah. So that's all I know about it. Yeah. So um, from what I understand, this is one of those family drama movies. Um, person comes into the family, adopted. Uh, someone has to deal with alcoholism, that kind of thing. I, I think it's going to do okay. I yeah. don't think it's going to break our top five. Yeah. I've I've been shocked before, but it, it doesn't have a wide release. Um, it's, I think, in like 1,300 theaters, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. But, but for, for them to promote it on The Tonight Show. That's true. That's true. So. And The Tonight Show has gotten significantly better since Jimmy has. Fallon came in. So. It has. I do like Jimmy Fallon. So our third pick, and this is what, where I think we might see some, some mix-up, is yeah. The Nut Job. I'm excited for this one. Did you like the first one? Never saw it. I had to turn it off. But I saw the trailer, yeah, and it made me laugh. So it's got um, oh, Will Arnett, mm -hmm. um, Jackie Chan, and a handful of like other. I don't want to call them B-list celebrities because I think that doesn't a service. Will but Arnett in voice acting has really stepped up. If you don't true. know one of the other movies he's been in, Hey Pewter, he's Batman. Oh, Will yeah. Arnett is Batman in the Lego Batman movie. Yeah. And, and I do think that, like, that does carry some weight. And I think that with that, um, but in my mind, this is not a sequel as much as it is a re-release. Yeah. Um, 
I think this is going to do okay. I don't think it's going to break the top spot. And I'm really curious how it's going to do against the Emoji Movie. Yeah. Um, they got some big names. I mean... Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's in it. Catherine Heigl. Yeah. Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah. That... Jeff Dunham. So a lot of, yeah, the, the B-list celebrities. Um, but I'm kind of excited for this one. Um, I know my kids are going to want to see it. Yeah. I don't right. know. Maybe. Maybe I'll let them go see it. We'll see. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to, I don't think it's going to be a bad movie. I just, looking at the original uh, plot of the first one, I really struggled to. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't carry with it the same, uh, the same level of of uh, confidence or or excitement as a lot of other franchise movies do. Yeah. Um, and and I think this is this is going to struggle with that. So, um, not a bad movie. Just I don't think it's going to break. It's not going to be our number one. Kids movies, especially in a lull like this, have have a lot of potential. Yeah. A lot of earning potential. This, I don't think does. Okay. I, I can see that, and it, it makes sense. It's not a big-time kids movie like Beauty and the Beast was. Yeah. Um, or any of the ma major Disney movies. Yeah. Um, but I still think it'll do well because families are not going to take their kids to go see Annabelle. <laughs> so Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. If you do, no judgment from no. us. You parent no. how you want to parent. Indeed. Um, so I think... <laughs> Just be prepared to be awake <laughs> at 3 in the morning by your child. Or yourself. Or yourself. <laughs> right. And if there's a doll that just winds <laughs> up on the middle of your bed... Don't blame us. Get out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> get out of the house. Blame Burn Barry house. Allen. Barry Allen did it all. Yep. Damn you, Barry. So, um, I think The Dark Tower is going to stay at number one. Okay. Um, looking at it, I gotta go with my gut, which I don't like to do at this point in time. I think Annabelle will take number two. Okay. With the Glass Castle at three. I think the Emoji Movie is going to stay. The that will drop down to four with. I want to say Girls Trip. Yeah? Yeah, Girls Trip taking number five. All right. All right. Okay, so as much as I want the Dark Tower to, to do better this week, I don't think it's going to. Okay. Because I think people didn't know what to expect. So I think Annabelle is going to take number one. Okay. Dark Tower will take number two. Dunkirk will remain three. I think emoji the emoji will be knocked out. It only made, I mean it only made twelve million last last month or last last week. Okay. So I do think it will be knocked out by Detroit. Really? Yeah. Now I think Detroit user reviews, critic reviews have it at a a really high. I think that's going to be a sleeper. And so I think what we're going to see is Detroit will come in at number four. Okay. Um, and the nut job will come in at number five. Interesting. Yeah, it'll be fun to see how this plays out. I think so too. I think so too. I am excited about this weekend because I will be able. To, I, I'm going to go see the Dark Tower. Okay. I'm going to go see it. Um, then I might go see it again next week. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I'm very excited about this week in movies, um, mostly because I'm I'm getting to see one. Yeah. That's why I'm excited. Um, love going to see movies. Movies are fun. Movies are great. But speaking of movies, now it's time for The Vault. All right. So my pick, and this is one I'm willing to bet everyone has seen at least once. Uh, it's one of those definitely feel good, hit mm -hmm. you, tug at the heartstrings, hit, hit you in the feels kind of movie. Mm -hmm. The Pursuit of Happiness, uh, starring Will Smith. And one of funny his enough, greatest roles. Oh, absolutely. And actually, has his son 
actually playing his yeah. on-screen son. Yeah. Um, this is the story about, oh, I don't remember the character's name. The Fresh Prince. Uh, yes. So this is a legitimate story, and, and based off of everything I remember, fairly accurate? It is, yeah. Um, so The Pursuit of Happiness is the story about Christopher Gardner, who has been trying to make it. Um, his wife ends up leaving him, and him and his son, again, his son is played by Jaden Smith, um, go out, um, you know, Will Smith tries to get into the, the Wall Street mm -hmm. world um, while trying to make ends meet. For a portion there, they're, they are homeless. Uh, he has to leave at a certain time. You know, he's got this internship. If he doesn't leave on time to get to the homeless shelter, they got to find some place. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one, like I said, it it is it, based on a true story. In fact, at the very end of the movie, Will Smith and uh, Christopher Gardner actually cross paths. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't know that unless you kind of seen a bunch of the stuff in the background. Yeah. Um, but definitely a, one of those feel-good movies at the end. Um, I'm glad you said at the end. At the end. Yeah. Uh, there, there is one scene. Oh, um, heart And you guys, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they end up spending the night in a, a public bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, that that one hit me hard. Oh yeah, that that one. I'm not one to cry at movies, but that that yeah. scene. Yeah, it, it was it was a tough scene to get through. Yeah, um, but uh, the overall message is: if you put your mind to it, you can achieve whatever goal you have, yeah. and really um, go for that that true happiness. So. Yeah, and, and this is definitely one that was interesting because I was thinking about this yesterday, and when you told me what your pick was, I was like, that's crazy because I was just having that thought. Um, this is definitely a good movie, and it's it's interesting because it's... It's a great movie. It, yeah, it, I'm still going with good, but like, it's definitely one of those, if you if you put your mind to it, you can really succeed, and... and you have to try hard. I mean, even if you put your mind to it and you, you want something bad enough, you still have to put in the work. You yeah. still have to put in. And that is not shown in any other place, any of the movie that I've seen before outside of this one. And so... I would say The Blind Side. Haven't seen it. That that one was good. The story about Michael Orr. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and his pursuit of becoming a, a football player. And yeah. And all the challenges he went through with his adopted family and all of that. So yeah. that, that's another one that really shows that, that overwhelming message of if you want to achieve your dreams, your dreams, you have to put in the work. Yeah. Nothing's no, nothing isn't just handed to you. Yeah. Regardless of what you may think. So, but this is definitely a good pick. Now I'm pretty sure I didn't say this one last week. I think hot fuzz was my pick hot last week. Okay. Last so good. Week. The Fountain. That is the reaction of a lot of people. I don't remember how I came about this movie. But it is one of my hands down favorite movies. It has um, Hugh Jackman, Rachel Weisz, um, a handful of other characters. I think yeah. Tay Diggs is in it. Um, there's a few other celebrities you'd recognize. But it tells three stories. It's, or it tells the, the one story three different times. So it starts with um, with Rachel Weisz playing the Queen of Spain, sending a conquistador oh, okay. to find the Fountain of Youth. And it's during the time of uh, the Inquisition, Spanish Inquisition. And so she's dealing with that while this inquisitor, this, this conquistador, is on his way to... To find the fountain of use, and and it, and it shows little clips throughout the movie of, oh, okay. of this now, story. Now I remember this one. It was um, one that I saw it, and I was like, eh. I loved it. I, I I love I love the music to it. It's uh, uh, Clint Mansell who did um, 
Requiem for a Dream and oh, okay. uh, a few others that are really prominent, really s solid soundtracks. Um, but then the other, what's what's cool about this, what I loved about this, is you have that story juxtaposed with a husband, uh, a brain surgeon, trying to find a cure for cancer. And uh, he, he inadvertently does, um, as he's doing this research, um, he uses this bark from this tree found in the Amazon, mm -hmm. which then harkens back to the, the conquistador. Um, and, and he, you know, uh, he, he finds this cure, but as at the time, uh, his wife is slowly dying. So his wife played by Rachel Wise in the Wise Vise, I don't know how to say it officially, but her, mm. um, so Hugh Jackman finds this cure, but at, by the time he does, it's too late. And it's, it's all about the passion, the drive, uh, and the desire to cure death. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorite lines from the movie is, death is a disease, and I will find a cure. Yeah. And it's, it's this really cool, it's, it's, it's this doctor, it's this conquistador, and finally, um, it's this really new age, uh, I don't know, yoga, yogi. Um, it's essentially, the three different phases of this guy's life. Oh, okay. And so he's it, he's floating around. It's Hugh Jackman again, floating around in this, this space bubble with this tree. And every once in a while, he'll go to the tree. He'll take a piece of bark from the tree. Um, he'll dice it up, and then he'll tattoo himself with it. Interesting. And it and it represents a ring. Now, the rings of a tree, the rings of bonds of marriage. Um, the ring that you know the Queen of Spain gives the conquistador, yeah. and it's it's fascinating because it brings in um, all these different really cool aspects. Visually, it's done really well. It's yeah. a very beautifully done movie, um, but it's all about life and love and and life and death and and. Speaking of death, did I ever tell you the wise tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Uh, no. No, oh, we'll oh, we'll save that for another episode. <laughs> when you said conquering death, that's what ran through my head was Darth Plagueis. But but that's the thing though is it's 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 fascinating, especially back back in the time when like people believed that there mm. was something that could, you know, prolong life. And I mean, and we have modern medicine. We have things that do prolong life. And but it's it's still it's still a really fascinating movie and yeah. and great actors in in the film. Um, so Jeff, Hugh Jackman, I mean. Hugh Jackman. Um, that's that's how you say his name in Australia. Hugh Jackman. Um, something to that extent. He'll always be Wolverine. Yes. Always. And the best part about Deadpool was the many, many, many jokes about Hugh Jackman. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's Although the, the one part. news, speaking of Deadpool, we got our first look at Cable. We did. We did. And he he looks good. He does. He looks good. I love the fact that we see more Josh Brolin than Thanos. Because yeah. Josh Brolin is playing both. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned Deadpool and whew, I forgot about that. That was some kind of big news. Big news. So yeah, but great movie Fountain. Check it out. Uh, and if you don't if you just like classical or or piano type music. Go to uh, Spotify and look up Clint Mansell. Yeah, um, it's a great soundtrack. Great soundtrack. So if I ever need to focus at work, that's the stuff. That there you go. So awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did enjoy, it, get, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Um, if there are movies that you want us to look at, um, you know, potential picks for the vault, leave it in the comment section below. Um, so. Uh, that's going to be it for this yeah. episode of Battle of the Cinema, powered by Geek Green Magazine. And uh, I, I always have fun doing this. Oh, I love doing this. This is it. like uh, one of my highlights of the week. So. Yeah, I totally love doing this. It's it's definitely one of those things that I, I love getting to, together and talking to anyone about movies. We get to nerd out. Yeah. And you get to join us. So Indeed. Um, again, I'm your host, a random dude, Josh, from the Undercover Kids Podcast Network. And... 
I'm Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. And we will see you guys next week.